Hey, Charles, I appreciate the time today, man. Uh, you know, looking over your record, I believe this is the first time that you've had the chance to compete in the United States in the fight capital of the world. Uh, does this one feel a little extra special, maybe checking some items off the bucket list? Yeah, it is. I always wanted to fight in Vegas. This is a dream coming true. Of course, the circumstances make it like a little uh, uh, special, uh, to be honest, but uh, I love it. The way the UFC are treating it treating us I almost feel uncomfortable like I feel treated like, uh, as a king and for me I always see myself as a conqueror not a, not as a king yet so yeah it's special and coming into this one you know it, taking you back to your last fight in the build-up to that one you were coming off a loss you might have felt like your back was up, up against the wall a little coming into this one you're coming into a you're coming off a big win does it feel any different you know are you more confident coming into this week or, or do you feel like you have to still stay you know razor focused and and not ride too high I need to stay sharp. I need to stay uh, uh, very focused because uh, my mentality going into the duo choi fight was like a do or, do or die mentality straight up. But I need to keep that mentality because that what helped me perform. So I'm not saying, okay, my name is written in the UFC. I got fight of the night. I'm I'm someone now. I don't I don't sit on that. I need to prove. Uh, I need to still prove the world who I am, and I need to prove that it's not because I'm fighting the number 18 uh, in the world at featherweight in my second fight at featherweight. Uh, it, it's a good thing for me, so I, I need to prove everybody that uh, yeah, I'm going uh, with the, the the pedal to the metal, the straight straight for the win. And Andre Feely uh, has been a is a guy that's been around for quite some time. Uh, when you were coming up through the regional scene, was he a guy that you watched? Were you familiar with him? Oh, of course, uh, man, I've been like YouTube has been one of my greatest teachers. So watching those guys from Alpha Male, Raya Faber, TJ Dillashaw, Cody, all those guys, I've always been, been a big fan of uh, their team, their way they, they do things. So it's going to be weird. I, I, I haven't seen him yet personally, but it's going to be weird. Like having do like when I fought Duo Choi, having him in front of me in the cage, I was like, oh my God, that was when he fought Gob and I was one of his biggest fans and this and that. So yeah, it's going to be special. And fighting a guy like that, uh, you know, what, what kind of opportunity do you think you have here? I see a lot of conversation online saying, oh, you know, this upcoming card has a lot of, uh, you know, fresher faces, maybe not a ton of guys with ranked numbers next to their names. Do you feel like you have an opportunity here to, to really steal the show? Yeah, 100 uh, percent. When I saw the card, of course, there are because sometimes people expect uh, like these type of cards and oh, they're going to be boring. But sometimes this is where you you see some diamond in the rough. So I think I'm one of those. And I think uh, it's a great, great opportunity for me to uh, prove my worth. Uh, and uh, yeah, straight up, I, I think no matter how big or how small the card is, uh, I'm I'm just ready to prove uh, to the world who I am. For sure. And, and my last question for you, if you go out there and you get it done on Saturday, uh, where do you think a win will put you in the division? You think you'll, you'll end up with a ranking next to your name on Monday? Uh, that would be amazing. I would love to be a top 15, but, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not pressed for that. Like I said, I'm a conqueror. I'm not ready to be the king yet. I don't have the tools to beat those top five guys uh, yet. And it's like humble way to say that I need to to keep my focus and keep working hard because when I'm seeing those guys fight the top five even top 10 even top 15 those guys are super dangerous so I'm not pressed I'm gonna conquer one uh, one fight uh, at a time appreciate the time Charles good luck thank you and we will take the next question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press Hey, thanks very much. And uh, Charles, first of all, uh, I wanted to ask, I mean, Quebec has more than half of Canada's COVID-19 cases. It's been pretty hard hit, um, even worse here than in Ontario, where I'm at. Uh, so I'm just wondering what the mood's been like there and how that's kind of impacted your camp. Uh, of course, it impacted the camp uh, in a way that uh, I didn't have uh, uh, full gyms. I have a, I had one gym where, I, where uh, it was okay for me to train uh, at, but... Um, uh, for most of my camp, I've been training outside with my brother, like literally wrestling in the grass, doing jujitsu in the grass, uh, sprinting outside, you know, it was something very fun for me to do. And, uh, you know, some fighters like say, uh, I prefer air conditioning, uh, tatami mats and this and that. But me, I like too much my sport to stop doing it because of the, the, the current situation. So me and my brother find ways to train. And then uh, Fabio Olanda, my jujitsu coach, steps in and found us a place with uh, some guys who uh, were negative and uh, we worked really hard and uh, I I have no excuse after this fight. I'm not going to say, oh, the whole pandemic thing. I didn't have a proper training camp. I didn't have this. I'm not a complainer, man. I, I did the best I could do with the current situation. 
And this is going to be a different kind of fight because it's coming in an empty venue, and we've heard a lot of fighters actually say they prefer that. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, for me, I'm a performer. Like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not basing my style on what people's like, but I'm kind of blessed that my style, uh, people like it. I always finish my fight. I'm flashy. I, I love it. And I'm fighting the way I want to fight. Plus, it pleases the crowd. So, of course, I, I love it when they, the arena is full. But it's going to be something special. I, I like throwing kicks a lot. And there's something like pure when you kick someone or you punch someone, you can hear that little noise. So uh, I can't wait to, to perform uh, uh, under these circumstances without no crowd cheering, just nothing. And I'm going to hear what his crowd, uh, well, no, uh, I'm going to hear what his corner is saying. And he's going to hear what my corner is saying. Uh, hopefully my guys keep speaking in French and we don't know what I'm about to do. But uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be special. When we spoke to uh, Andre earlier, he uh, was asked what he has to watch out for, for from you. And he mentioned, you know, you're a guy who likes to spam flying knees. What do you have to watch out for from him? Uh, level change and traps. The, the, I don't think his wrestling is that good, but he's, uh, it, it's all about timing. And Andre Philly's timing is second to none, I think, in the featherweight division uh, in the takedown. Like, it's not forcing them. He's just always timing it perfectly. So... Uh, me being the unexperienced fighter against him, uh, this is something that's uh, probably going to work in uh, in his favor. So he's going to lay some traps here and there, and it's my my job to stay vigilant and uh, not. I need to be wild. I need to be me to win. I lost against Desmond Green because I said I'm going to fight like a UFC fighter. I'm going to be prudent. I'm going to. I fought like someone I was not. That's why I lost. So I'm I'm not doing the same mistake twice. So I'm I'm going to stay me more sharp. My jiu-jitsu has improved so much. I've been uh, getting my ass kicked at the Montreal Wrestling Club by these super uh, uh, Olympic wrestlers. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to show uh, my improvements. You did take the green fight uh, at lightweight. Is there any plan at any point? Because a lot of people have been going up in weight during the pandemic. Are you just staying the course of featherweight? Oh yeah, of course. Featherweight is my is my weight. I like I, I walk around 156. When they actually when they called me for the Desmond Green fight, I was 152 or 153. I, I'm a small guy. I don't have like that, that man muscle yet, but uh, I'm getting bigger. I, I like it. And last one for me, we saw Felicia Spencer fight last week and obviously didn't go her way, but you're another young Canadian star in the UFC now. What's that kind of feel like to be at the front of that wave? Uh, total motivation. When I saw Felicia uh, work her way uh, through the rankings, uh, she fought, you know, she fought Cyborg, she fought Amanda Nunes, and she got big hits from from these fighters. And when Amanda Nunes or Chris Cyborg hits you, most of the time uh, girls would would go down, and she did. And so it was something I was excited about, and I'm uh, very proud to be Canadian and very proud that she represented us uh, the way she did. Even though she didn't get the results she wanted, uh, people now know Felicia and. Uh, and they know you, you can't take out that girl. She's a fighter. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Zach Packleb with UFC.com. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> I, I keep uh, looking at the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so you talked a little bit about how exciting it was to get that first win. How much of a, almost like a relief it was, to, especially after losing your debut, to get that over a guy that, like you said, you've been working with. Uh, yeah, it, getting that win was enormous for me because, uh, like I said, uh, I'm, I was in a do or die situation. Like, uh, if I would have lost this one, maybe the UFC would have said, oh, okay, maybe that two weight world champion from Canada um, it was just hype. And uh, I wanted to prove that I, I was not. And uh, yeah, when, like, it's easy to get, uh, some people say it's easy to get to the UFC, it's harder to stay in the UFC. So, I 100% I agree with that. And I was like, yeah, I made it to the UFC. Then I got my first loss. And I'm like, if I'm losing this one, I'm out. So the relief of pressure was enormous. Plus that 50 Gs helped a lot. <laughs> okay, so obviously, Andre feeling like you said, another veteran, a guy who's been around. Yeah. And he's well-rounded. So what about him uh, allows, like, what kind of statement are you excited to be able to make because of the skill set Andre feeling has? Uh, the, the statement will be uh, simple. It's my second fight at featherweight. He's, not, no, he's, he's the number 18 in the world. So it's a big step up for me. I'm not taking any shortcuts. I'm, I'm fighting the best of the best. And I, I like it this way. And uh, yeah, I think, I, man, if you look at my records, dual choice and Andre Philly with a W next to both of these names, I mean, 
how can you not agree that I'm 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 coming for the for the goal at some point? So uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited, really. Those will be two big games. But you said earlier, you know, you're not you know rushed to get up to the top. Up. Where does that patient approach come from? Uh, it comes with uh, the the humbleness of looking at my skill set and looking at other fighters' skill set. I I'm I'm kind of intimidated intimidated by all those guys in the top fifteen. Uh, which is a normal thing, and I'm, I'm I'm being real about it. And if you know you're weak at some point, you know you can get stronger. So I'm not going to be out there saying I can beat everybody in the world. Uh, I I would love to fight everybody in the world, but for, for my skill set, I need to improve. I need to stay sharp. I need to stay focused. Was that something you, you learned along the way, or is that always been like that humbleness? It's always been part of me, uh, and uh, I've always been super respectful, super, uh, uh, super real. At the end of the day, if I if I'm fighting someone who terrorized me, I was open. Like at the end of the interview, I uh, against my fight against Alex Morgan, he, he was like the best Canadian out there, and I, I finished him in one round. And I openly said that I at some point, some nights, I was crying because I was terrified fighting someone like him. So uh, I'm not taking any pride in saying I'm crying, but I'm I'm just being real. Like that's how much pressure I'm putting on my shoulder just to make sure I perform the best I can. So how do you get um, through that mental uh, of your skin situation? It seems like you're very accepting of it. So what's that process like as you work through that to get to the cage and perform as well as you do? Excuse me, can you uh, repeat the question? Yeah. How do you get through the you know the intimidation, the fear factor to perform as well as you do once you stay inside the I'm always creating an image of the my my opponent, my enemy, like so much bigger than they actually are, and I will keep on doing that. Like when I was fighting uh, anybody, I'm always almost having nightmares of it because I'm, my my mind is creating a monster who's fighting against me, and then as soon as I get hit by them, I'm like, okay, he's a human. I can hit him. I can like when I, I knock down Duo Choi at the end of the first, I'm like, okay, you, you knock me down, but I can knock you down also. So you're a human after all. So I'm creating those big like disgusting image of my opponent and then I can I manage to overcome it so uh I'm like like I said I'm terrified of Philly I admit it I'm terrified of him but as soon as we get into the ring I'm gonna I'm gonna have him in the clinch and I'm I I'm I don't know I will see I'm I'm scared but I, I love it so obviously you have multiple fights under your belt at this point going through that process yeah what was that like early in your career uh, same same thing. Uh, the, the the fight that I performed the best uh, were the fights that I was terrorized. I was putting all that pressure on myself. The first time I fought professionally was actually in Thailand in like a small place with dogs walking around, like not nothing sanitary. And uh, I fought a guy who was like 30, 40 pounds bigger than me and I knocked him out and I was so scared, but I, I performed under that pressure. So it's important to be scared, it's important to be stressed, and it's important to embrace it so you can use it as a weapon. And the last thing for me, like, uh, you know, again, the unique circumstances around the fight is not going to be as bad or anything. But as you're walking to the octagon, without the crowd cheering or and, and, you know, that whole process, what's going to be going through your head as you, you know, go through, get, get your prep point stuff done and walk into the cage? I cannot predict it uh, because I, it's the fir it's the first time for me. I always fight it in front of big crowds. Uh, when I was fighting in Canada, I was always main event, co-main event. I was always like the headline guy, so always big crowds. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be special. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, when, when we're going to fight, if I hit him and I hear that little pop, the noise, this is for me, this is like a very good feeling when I feel... Uh, my shin connect to someone plus the little snap there's something violent there's something pure about it that I truly enjoy so yeah it's going to be a first for me but uh, I think I might enjoy it